What's up everyone, Beast Mode back here with another video. So today we are going to discuss the Blackwing matchup, specifically from the zombie point of view. I've had a lot of questions regarding how do you play the matchup, Blackwings are everywhere, they keep beating me, stuff like that. So um, I had to go through some replays and try to remember when I actually played against a uh, Blackwing deck, maybe in tournament play or not, and whatnot, but I found one from Deck Devastators uh, 3, the one that I just got the top 12 cut. Um, hopefully this can showcase some of it. I I'm going to talk through some of the situations and some of the, the plays that you have to be mindful of when you're playing zombies into black wings. Also my buddy JG, uh, who does a commentary with us during the stream, he's played a few black wing players in tournament play. He sent me over his re uh, replays. We were actually going to do this video together, but unfortunately I had to record earlier than he was available. So, um, I will, will review his games as well. I'm not going to, you know, nitpick about everything. I might point out a play that I would have done a little bit differently, but um, he's a very competent zombie player, and he typically beats most black wing players that he's playing against. So I think he has a general understanding of how to play the matchup. So a few things to be mindful of. If you're playing zombies, it requires a few cards to set up to do any combos, right? You need to have a goblin zombie on the board and or a diva play or plague spreader play. Also may require a book of life. And so those are a few things that you need. So you need at least two cards to typically do most of the zombie combos. Black Wings, the big card in the deck, Icarus Attack, loves to see two cards on your opponent's side of the field. So it can be difficult at times to try to set up these plays because Icarus can just blow you out. Now, Icarus in itself is not a huge problem. It's a problem when Ashura gets a plus one off an attack, searches a Bayou or a Gale or whatever the case may be, and then... You know, you waste a piece of removal on on, a, on the Black Wing or the Shura. Maybe next turn you would try to deprison or book a moon, and then they chain an Icarus. So they're getting like a plus two, essentially. They got a plus one from the deck off of the Shura, and now they're tributing the extra Black Wing that they got for um, the Icarus, and then they're chaining it in response to something. So they're getting another plus there. So that's when the game just gets blown out of uh, proportion. Like, you can just get blown out if you don't play around that card well. Now... There are a couple of ways to play around it. Specifically, recruiters are actually not bad in Tashura. I find that opening up a Pyramid Turtle specifically is, is actually a pretty decent opening uh, opener versus Shura because the reality is you oh, say you set a turtle first and they run it over with Shura. You search, you can search a Mizuki, which you don't care if it goes to the graveyard. Mizuki is bigger than any of the black wings that they're going to search typically they search a value because if they have an icarus they want to just blow it up with the uh tribute for the icarus so on your next turn you can just attack directly into value and call and you just bait out the icarus right then and there or if you don't commit another card to the field they can't icarus so now they're looking at having to respond with an icarus attack on their own shura so you have to kind of put them in awkward positions in order to really run away with the matchup put a bunch of floaters out there that you don't care if they get Icarus attacked at all. You try to bait it out. That's really what I do. So let's hop into a replay here and see if we can point out a couple times where um, we kind of played around Icarus. I'm not sure. If I remember correctly, this match was pretty easy. I don't even think this was, wasn't was overly um, difficult. So let's just see here. This was round five of Deck Devastators, I believe. Round five. So hand's pretty good. I'm not sure if I know they're playing Black Wings or not. Let's just hide their hand. Show my hand. Um, I'm not sure if I know they're on Black Wings or not. You know, sometimes you get information throughout Swiss tournaments or who's playing what, but I'm, I'm not sure. Um, and I think I get to go first here. So you can set either recruiters here is probably the best play. I would probably set Turtle. Yeah, so we set Turtle. So the, this person here is playing overly aggressive. I'm not sure why we do this. Like, design. I'm not sure if this is a very good play in Black Wings. Typically, just slamming cards. But, um, you know, what is this benefit? I guess it's some damage, but I don't know. Maybe he thought it was a Raikou. That's probably why. So obviously, everything is set up perfect here. Okay, we already got a heavy for a plus one. Hopefully, what is the back row? Yep, they have an Icarus there, and of course. So in this situation here, we don't care if the Icarus, right? We're going to slam heavy. They can chain Icarus. They're just going to kill a Goblin Zombie. We prefer if they actually do that. They can tribute one of their guys. This is probably not a good idea that if they do chain it. Let's see if they do. They do. So that's really not... That's not good at all, in my opinion. They're just giving me more advantage. So um, 
sometimes, you know, people are just activating Icarus attacks and playing cards and not really putting much thought into that. I see that, obviously, I talk about that in almost every video. People play cards without any thought or purpose. They just play them because they can. Um, so, like, here, I think it would have just been better to not Icarus attack. I don't know, but maybe I'm missing something. So, we are just playing passive again. Obviously, we could have searched... Um, goblin zombie i mean zombie master we could have pitched the ill blood grabbed the turtle crash search the plague spreader we could have done all that but i'm already up so many cards and i have a mirror force down here like i'm just gonna run away with this game and i and i'm in a position where i just know that i'm likely the better player here i'm just able to manage my cards better so i'm just gonna sit back and just let the game come to me more or less so let's see what my opponent does here i don't recall okay so fall like playing right into mirror force here obviously dang and i right like this is bad you know obviously i'm getting another plus one here so this this game here we had a plus for the heavy we got a plus with the mirror force so i guess it's not really going to showcase how to play around the icarus that well but um at this point i have what six cards there too it's very unlikely i lose this game and i'm summoning a spirit reaper to, to discard a card so i'm not sure this was exactly high tier play out of uh on my behalf or more or less just not the greatest play for my opponent unfortunately i'm not I'm not sure if they're new to the deck or whatnot. And then they summon uh, Kalut. So we're both undefeated at this point. I think this is... Yeah, no, sorry. We're not undefeated. I actually lost round one to Gladiator Beast and had to win six or seven rounds in a row to make the top cut. So we both have one loss. Uh, so I think we're both three and one right now. Um, so summoning Kalut here is probably a bad idea because I have a tomato on the board. Um, at this point, the game's over. I would guess. I think I set Torrential. I probably would just set Torrential here just in case things get a little... Um, so, again, flips a heavy just to flip a heavy. No reason to do that at all. Like, you're top decking here. Why flip heavy just to get rid of... You're not making any plays. Why do it? I, I don't know. I know. I understand that in this situation, they're probably not coming back anyway, but I just don't get it. Maybe they thought it was an MST. So, at this point, I don't care if I play into Torrential or anything like... Oh, Torrential's already gone. Sorry. Um, so uh, this is a safe play, obviously, aside from bottomless. Let's see here. So we get Book of Moon here. So the Catastrophe is not a very good play into Blackwing, but I don't play Android because of this, the extra deck is so tight. Um, but top decking to my six cards, like Blizzard's probably the only top deck that would do anything. And even that, like if you get Goyo, if you top deck Blizzard here and get Goyo, you can take my Brio, but this can out the Catastrophe can out the um the Brio. And I can literally just summon Plague and you know make a Goyo of my own and take back my Brio. So uh, I think that this game's over. It's not really an out that he has oh, he actually top decks Doc Eruption, so that does get him back Blizzard. So essentially top decking a Blizzard here, but it's not gonna be enough. So Goyo is probably the better play um yeah i don't see why that it doesn't matter here anyway but so yeah that's game um that wasn't very good on my opponent's uh behalf anyway I, again i'm not sure what happened there they were just playing extremely aggressive blackwing can just steal games like way, that way because the deck is so aggressive that you don't have to play the deck well to, to win with it because you can just slam cards and you know at the end of the day you have a monster a board full of five monsters and you can just overwhelm somebody so and, and the and the cards themselves are just so much better than most of the other cards like read whirlwind we read shura read soroko like you can normal summon a 2000 beater uh, blizzard is a one card level six synchro every card in the deck is crazy so you don't have to be crazy crazy good to play the deck i do think you need to have a lot of skill to play the mirror match and especially at higher levels but um again this is round five of a tournament so we both already have one loss um let's see here so again we're just summoning the mizuki here it's they can't icarus us do they have an icarus now um if they want to collute this sure by all means do that um we don't care so they book a moon. Interesting. So I don't think I actually book here because I don't care. I'm saving the book of moon for a big play. Probably thinking about it, I should have booked um, just so they don't get the extra search. But after watching game one, I'm pretty confident that I'm probably just going to get a hand of this game anyway. So 
they search another blizzard. I let this all go through. So the problem is now by me not booking there, I actually play into a possible Icarus, but they would have had to drawn it. Looks like they did. Um, so that was not the best choice by my on my ha behalf there. I'm not sure what I was thinking at the time. I just figured like I'd rather save the Book of Moon for a bigger push or a Blizzard play, I guess. But um, because like Kalut searching Blizzards, I guess, is probably not a good idea for me. Um, but so we're just going to get Icarus attacked here. And then that book as actually just gets wasted. And then they want me to confirm that it was actually a book. And I'm trying to say, like, I'm not going to cheat. But I understand that. I don't fault my... Uh, opponent for that they want the proof i gave them the proof that i actually discarded the book of moon um so in this situation here they're getting a bunch of searches but i don't think any of this is going to matter because um they're just slamming as many cards as they can and i have gores so we're good we'll take all the damage and we're going to drop gores here so in this situation here um playing this allure they can obviously icarus attack um if they chose to but that's fine because if they do icarus they flip, say this is Icarus, they flip Icarus, they hit my two guys. I'm still going to allure, and I can potentially keep the Spirit Reaper and then smash and summon Spirit Reaper and discard a card. Um, so we get the Ill Blood, which is perfect discard. That's all we use this card for. Um, so in my mind, I say I'm going to go here. If Mirror Force is here, then I don't. it doesn't matter to me because I could be in a bad position, but I also have a follow-up Mind Control Diva play, so I'm okay with that. We attack. They book a moon. We're just going to crash. Anyway, I'm not sure. Like why they do that that doesn't make any sense to me um because they're going to lose the android anyway and they can't out the gores but that's fine so we use smash so the only card here that could potentially hurt us is so um the blizzard into a brio play would actually win them the game and i realized that i said okay so this is one thing you don't do you don't just concede you let your opponent play and they actually don't go into blizzard i'm not sure why <laughs> they could have won the game they just you know, they search four cards with the Whirlwind. They search a Blizzard, and um, uh, it didn't matter anyway. I knew they had the Blizzard, so I don't know why they didn't do it. Um, but anyway, we get to another chance at playing the game, so. Let's see here. We're going to try to gain some life back, get back in this game. Uh, but pretty straightforward stuff. We keep gaining life. We sack for Achaeus. Set bottomless. So they heavy here. Minus one to destroy a back row for what? I don't know. To summon a Kalut in a Whirlwind. So unfortunately, uh, you know, my opponent is just not playing that well. But honestly, this is how a lot of people play Edison format. So this is probably a good um, recap of why slamming cards is not a good idea and actually putting some thought into playing cards appropriately. Because I will tell you, if you watch a lot of the ranked games that are online and just watch a lot of matches and you see people play like this. Um, so I should have lost this game just because of the fact that they had double blizzard in the hand. I let them search one of them anyway, and they could have just brioed me. It wouldn't have mattered. They had enough cards to discard no matter what I did. Um, but they didn't make brio. They didn't make the right play. And um, they give us another shot at a game here. And looks like we're just kind of dominating the game, despite everything that happened. This, you know, had multiple whirlwind searches and still just playing here. Uh, again, I don't know. He already has used his Goyo. He could have summon blizzard again and made brio obviously i'm out of life point like i don't die to brio this time but um i'm not sure if this is the worst play so we lose our Kaius here so once it gets later in the game it's a little bit harder to play around icarus because you don't really have a choice sometimes so another prime example someone just slamming back rows uh slamming mst for what reason i don't know um could you just set that you lose a blizzard you don't really care like if i de prison blizzard do you care here probably not brain controlling a sangin to make a synchro play um so i think every single turn my opponent has played a card just to play a card they deck debbie me which is fine i'm going to lose two cards but i have mizuki in the graveyard so it doesn't matter So we put them on a two-turn clock here. We Mizuki out the Goblin Zombie, uh, the Zombie Master rather, just because we know that they're top decking. And if they happen to top deck a Spell or Trap, we have the Dust Tornado so we can just win the game. So the only way we don't win the game here is that they top deck a monster. 
they did, which is fine. We show them for deck Debbie. We can run over pretty much anything. They're sending black wing defenses are not very high. Um, do they have a value in the graveyard? They don't. So we have drawn three traps or two traps in terms of deck Devi. Our opponent drew a solemn judgment and we win. So unfortunately, this probably didn't showcase the best way to play around or to play black wings just because I'm not sure if my opponent's new or if they're new to the deck, but they did not play cards well. Anybody who watches the video can probably see a lot of the mistakes that were made. They had game at one point um, with the Brio. And I actually, I have to say something I learned from watching this game again is that I got two lax game two just because of how poorly uh, my opponent played game one. I was very confident I was just going to win the match. And I was letting them search and search, and I didn't really care. I could have just booked one of them and stopped. I didn't play very clean game two, despite the fact that... Um, and again, sometimes you don't have to play 100% if your opponent's just giving you the game. And this is an example of that where, where that happened. So let's get into JG's um, matches. I think he is playing higher uh, or better players anyway. I think one of them is against... Uh, I think both of these people might have topped events that he sent me um, matches with. HT19. I'm not sure if he's topped or not. but um, So let's get into this one. See how he plays around and plays the Blackwing matchup. Might be a little bit better game here. Um, so let's look at our opening hand. So our opponent gets to go first. Let's hide. Let's just hide his their hand. That way we can see what he was thinking about at the time. I don't know if he's aware. I'm actually watching the game. I don't know if he's aware. Well, he knows they're playing Blackwing now. So let's see here. So a couple of things you can do this turn here. You're never going to set Solemn because you can't really afford to do that. And um, that plays right into Icarus Attack. So you have two plays. You set Goblin or you summon Zombie Master. Summoning Zombie Master is fine. The problem is you can try to attack into it. If they have a D-Prison Mirror Force, you're going to be eating some damage next turn. And um, you could also, they could drop Kalute. Take You're going to take 1,300 and then they're going to attack again next turn. If they have another Blackwing, they could really just start rushing you down. Setting Goblin Zombie, you're going to st still take some damage, but it helps in, um, insulate a little bit against an Icarus attack. So he sets Goblin Zombie. I think that's fine. I think either play here is probably fine. Does he have... So he did have Mirror Force. He probably would just Mirror Force the... Um, he would Mirror Force the Zombie Master. He's going to at least slam the bla uh, the Bora next turn. So you would take a lot of damage. You do have Trigodia, but I think this is fine. It's probably the better play. It's just setting uh, Zombie Master. And again, it helps with the Icarus attack. So this person is just doing very aggressive plays here. That's kind of how I guess Blackwing should play. But... Um, so he searches Plague. Makes sense. He's got Book of Life here. He's also got a Trigodia that he's going to drop. So this is all fine. So this right here is a situation where Blackwing is very good. See how they get the value off this? Now, when we hit an Icarus attack, if they have an Icarus attack here and they're hitting two of your cards, or let's say it's their turn, they attack with Shura, you deprison the Icarus with the value and hit two more cards, it's hard to beat them. So I think the whole goal or what I should really get at for this video is that if you're playing Blackwings, you have to really, really play around Icarus attack for as long as you can afford to do so so sometimes you have to take some damage sometimes you have to really limit the card you're setting because um at, at a certain point you have to play right you can't just lose the game because you're only going to set one back row only going to play one card but at certain times in the game especially when it's early and you haven't seen any icarus attack yet um you try you know you got to always read a back row as an icarus attack essentially and you want to look at your hand and put yourself in the position where is this Icarus attack going to blow me out? Because that's really the, one of the best cards in the deck because of how much uh, advantage the deck can generate just on Whirlwinds and Shuras. The Icarus attacks are almost free. And they're just blowing up two cards like a Geyser's every turn. So um, here he drops Trigodia, which is perfect. You need to do that there. Let's see. So here, I think that he's going to take one, um, probably take the Shura because this deck plays, uh, we play Gale in our builds typically. So I think this is here. So this obviously plays into Icarus Attack, but this is an Icarus Attack that you don't typically care to, to, to lose, right? So you can keep Trigodian defense um, and you're going to just attack with Shura here. You can run over the Bora if they have Kalut, whatever. And um, you're just gaining advantage by taking their cards and they're wasting things on their own monsters. Let's see if this goes through. So this does go through. So that searches us out a Gale. So it's safe to say that he probably doesn't have Icarus. Well, not that it matters now. This is not a, uh, a wing beast, but it's pretty obvious that he didn't have Icarus attack because he probably would have used it to get rid of the Trigodia there. Um, so we can now safely assume that one of these back rows or none of these back rows are Icarus attack. So here we're going to brain control to make a level eight play, it seems like. 
can do a lot of things here, actually. Yep, level eight Stardust. So now we're we're good against the um we're really good against any destruction. We have Starlight, uh, Stardust and Solemn. Does this card here destroy that target? I don't know. Does he negate this? So he doesn't negate it with Stardust. Interesting. I think I probably would just negate that. I, I don't want to give my opponent a plus because this card destroys, right? Destroy that target. Yeah, I think I would probably just negate that with Stardust. I'm not sure what the thought was there. Um, yeah, because if he negates that, um, obviously the, the Goyo here can't take the Stardust. So that gives you, a next turn, it gives you a little bit more um, insulation against your follow-up play to the Goyo because now they can't bottomless or stuff like that. So um, I'm not sure. Again, during the tournament, it's it's hard to say what you're thinking. You're trying to make a bunch of reads and think about what you can do next turn. So um, we'll see what happens here. Um, so if this is me, I'm guessing that he's probably going to... Um, so he can actually discard the Goyo. Uh, sorry, he can discard the Caius to take the Goyo here. Uh, might be a good play. I think that he's first going to try to bait. I would guess he's going to try to run over the Stardust here. And then if that goes through, he'd probably pitch the Caius to take the Goyo. We'll see. So that doesn't happen. Um, so doing that, you risk losing. Now, this is going to be, this is kind of a, not a good situation, I don't think. Yeah. So hmm, that's interesting. And, oh, okay, they had a Solemn. Um, yeah, okay. I don't think anything he's doing is, is wrong. I think I would have maybe sequenced a few different uh, different cards there. I'm not, you know, I, I can't really, unfortunately, we don't have a rewind button, but I'm not sure if discarding the Caius to take the Goyo and try to run over the Stardust, I think that might have been the play I would have done. Um, it Obviously, Mirror Force kills it, um, and you're kind of in the same situation here. Uh, except the Goyo would be off the board. I'm not, again, we'll have to see what they were thinking during the time. This person has everything anyway. They have every answer. They're Solomon, they're Royal Oppressioning. They have, you know, at this point, it doesn't really matter. I think this game's probably over. Um, let's see here. I think this is just going to get closed out. It's really hard. This is like the Teledad setup. You drop a bunch of Synchros and hide behind Royal Oppression, and you really can't counter it. Uh, Spirit Reaper might be able to save the game a bit here and okay so he does book that so i'm not entirely sure why oh, maybe he didn't want to lose stardust to a d prison or something and it, so he icarus so there's a prime example icarus attack at the end of the game you can't play around that in that situation you have to set into it so it is what it is so JG loses game one. I think that he probably could have won the game with a couple of sequencing. I'm, I'm not sure. It's hard to say. Um, I don't think he played poorly or anything like that. I think it was, you know, opponent has Royal Oppression, has Solemn. It's kind of hard to win. Um, so this this hand here, let's see what his sixth card is. I think this is a hand here where I'm just going to set Dust Tornado and pass. Just because if they Whirlwind, you have a response to it. You also have an end phase to hit a Dust Tornado. Uh, sorry, hit the Icarus. I don't think you need to commit anything here. So I, I think Dust Tornado is probably just what I would do. Looks like that's what he does as well. So that's I think that's the right play. Because setting Spirit Reaper first, you set Spirit Reaper here. If they Let's say they MST or something. Now, if they MST this or Heavy this, they summon Boar, they get, they get damage over the Spirit Reaper, and they're also now going to set Icarus Attack. So you can't follow up because the second you try to do a follow-up play, they're going to blow up and they're going to tribute the Boar and they're going to hit your Spirit Reaper and whatever play you're trying to make. So I think this is fine what he does here. He does hit in the end phase. He hits the Icarus attack, which is perfect. We're just So he doesn't get greedy here. He doesn't summon the Spirit Reaper. I think I'm too greedy. I probably would have. Um, he's just playing around the fact that he probably has Kalut. And if he does, he's going to drop it here. So let's see. He does. Set Spirit Reaper here. Okay. Again, see how he's playing around Icarus attack. Not setting Solemn. No need to do that right now. Because first off, you don't want to set Solemn until you're in a position where you actually don't care, where you care enough to use it. Return's obviously dead. Um, so there's really no reason to set any of this stuff right now. Plus it insulates against any Icarus attack. So I think this is, I think he's playing fine right now. And if it was me, I would have probably had the Spirit Reaper in attack mode. I would have just risked it for the biscuit and said he doesn't have Kalut. And I would have taken, you know, pretty good damage to the face. So, um, 
So in this situation here, we have a couple decisions we can make. We can summon the Pyramid Turtle, crash into the Bora, and then maybe pull out Illblood and run over um, the Shura. We could also make another option, which is we could crash and search Mizuki and then crash again because they're not going to want to uh, waste a Kalut on a Mizuki, typically. Um, so I think either play is fine. I'd probably go Pyramid, uh, the Illblood route here just so I can get it out of the deck because the thing sticks to your hand. And um, I'd probably crash here and then try to grab Illblood and run over the Shura. Does, do they have another clue? They don't. So that would be um, that's probably what I would have done. He, d he chose to do the Mizuki route. I don't think this is wrong either. Um, you just have a lot invested in the Spirit Reaper here to probably try to keep you in the game. Because now I think you're forced to set the Solemn because you just gave him a level 4 here by doing this. You just gave him the, the Bora. So now a Blizzard will kill you. So you have to set Solemn here. Whereas, um, of course, with Illblood, you're still going to give him the level 6, but you have Illblood and Spirit Reaper on the board with him having a Bora, and then you set Solemn. feels a little bit better. Oh, he's going for the Book of Life play. So he's actually going for the Book of Life play. What did he... Turtle Bora, yeah. So he was actually going to remove the Bora. So that, that was heads up. Um, of course, here, I still think you got to set Solemn. So he does set Solemn. He, I think he, you have that internal clock, right? A lot of players know they have that feeling like something's going to happen if they don't. You know what I mean? It's kind of like when you're going back and forth, pass, draw, pass, draw, both you and your opponent. And then all of a sudden you're just thinking to yourself, all right, next turn, if they don't do this, I'm going to win the game. And then all of a sudden they do exactly what you don't want them to do because they have that internal clock too. People can just sense when things are, are about to happen. They can feel it in the game. So I think that that was smart play there. He, he understood the situation and set the Solemn. Um, so, and now also Solemn is going to protect against any Icarus here or anything like that. And you really can, um, protect any follow play you're doing here. Android. So this still loses to Kalut, um, which is the reason why I probably would have just got Illblood because Illblood would have lost to Kalut as well. So he's gaining some life back, which is important. I think you have to Solemn that. Yep. hundred percent. So he does Solemn. That makes sense. That's actually a really good play. It's a lot of life points, but you have to do it. Soul release against zombies over not that great um, because so and this is the reason why. Look at his hand. Even let's say he doesn't have burial, he has return. You just gave him a return play, and if he doesn't have return, he has burial. He just puts Mizuki right back in the graveyard. Of course, he has to. You know, he didn't get a free Mizuki, so um, I just don't. I think DD Crow is just better against zombies because you can use it on the Book of Life like this person did, um, which just feels a lot better because it's a one for one. Where this is just a straight minus one. Because this is essentially going to be a one for one because the Mizuki is still going to activate and special summon a monster. So this is essentially going to replace itself with whatever zombie Mizuki summons. Let's see here. Um, so yeah, 100%. Go for Spirit Reaper here. But the problem is life points. So you, we have to remember here, I probably would say, all right, I'm going to go Spirit Reaper. I'm going to discard the card, but main phase two, I'm going to go into Catastrophe just so I don't lose to a top deck um, Blizzard, essentially, because you could top deck Blizzard here and um make the armed wing and uh that would be game that's 2000 over that so i think that's what he's probably thinking he's going to discard the card and then main phase two he's going to synchro so he does play android i typically don't or maybe i did for this term i don't know so okay so i think this is something i would have done differently i definitely would not have just left spirit reaper in attack position here i know he oh, he is gaining the 600 in the end phase but you really are risking losing the game um or to a Goyo, like Goyo would beat you too, um, or thereabouts. Ah, close. You would have had 50 life points left. I still think I'd probably go into Cataster here. Um, so I think this is going to be just about over. So opponent just scoops. I didn't see what he drew, but he had Icarus down there, and um, JG was able to win game two. So let's get into game three. A couple of things I would have done a little bit differently. I'm not saying they're better or worse, just the way I would have played. Um, I think for the most part, JG is playing pretty clean. Um, again, you saw from turn one of game two, kind of just setting one card. Again, the spell and traps that he had in his hand make it a little bit easier to make those decisions. But I, I think that setting just a dust tornado is probably the right play turn one there. I think right here, what I would do is, so you can do one of two things. You can set just dust tornado. You can brain control here and dodge the Icarus attack and attack for 17 and then just summon a D.Va and Synchro with it. I think that's also fine. Let's see what he chooses to do. So he does choose to do that, which is fine, I think. 
So, of course, the Royal Oppression gets, um, what is that, a plus one, essentially. Royal Oppression turn one. Uh, so, setting Dust Tornado probably would have just been the better play, just setting Dust and Pass. But then you're opening yourself up to taking a lot of damage. So, I'm not, I think the play he made is fine. So, bad play. This is terrible. Again, people slamming MST. It happens all the time. What, why do that? Why does it matter? Like, why are you going to do that? Because the only, the, what are you trying to hit? A bottomless? What's his hand? So he has Shura. So he would have a Shura. So he's hoping that the Shura sticks. So he's just hitting the back row. Just slamming the back. So now Dust Tornado literally gets a plus one because of, of activating a card and not properly, in my opinion. Um, so Shura comes down. Not a big deal. This situation, we're just going to smash. Um, I'm probably just setting bottomless and saying go. He's choosing to set Diva here. I think he's obviously trying to set up a Kai's play. But the problem is the deck plays so many. He does play a probably equal amount of cards that are under 1500 attack with the Kalutes, with the Gale, Blizzards. Um, what is in his hand? Yeah, every card in his hand except from Dark Arm is under this. So he's going to lose his Diva here for nothing. I would have probably just eaten the 1400. And so my situation, I would have just taken the 1400 and then I would have drawn a Pyramid Turtle and I would have still had Diva in my hand and you're probably far better off here. Yep. So one of the reasons why you don't summon an attack there, because if they have a mirror force, which they do, you just lose the game. So you let them, you always want, in my opinion, you always want your opponents attacking your recruiters. I don't really often ram recruiters into my opponent's monsters, unless I have a really big play that I'm going to make. For the most part, you don't, because then you, you're you giving them tempo when you ram things on your turn, because you can only make plays main phase two, and then you're going to have potential of taking damage on when it's their turn. So I typically, exactly how JG played here, setting the Pyramid Turtle is appropriate. Um, he drew a Dark Arm now, so now his, his Annie has a Kaya. So now he's like, okay, I'm going to search me a Goblin Zombie here, and I'm going to start setting up the Graveyard for Dark Arm. So I'm guessing he's going to crash and search Goblin Zombie. Let's see. He does, and we're going to get the Kaya's play in here. doesn't feel good to Kaya's a Kalute, but... Uh, and then he searches Plague Spreader Zombie here. Um, I think that's probably fine because his thought is if this Kaius doesn't die, I can summon the Plague Spreader, I can Synchro into maybe a Stardust or Dark End, and I can slam Dark Arm and probably win the game. So I think that's a perfect search there. Unfortunately, the Gale, again, dodges the Bottomless. Comes down. So we have another Turtle. So in this situation here, you summoned Turtle last turn and attacked, um, and they did not Mirror Force. I'm not sure why. They let you do it. Um, so my read would be try it again, um, because then you can crash here. You can search ill blood or zombie master or Mizuki either. Any of them is fine. Um, so let's see what he does. I'm not, okay. So I'm, I'm not getting it here. I don't get why, I'm, why this person is not mirror forcing. I, I don't get it. So he is allowed a Kalut and a Gale get destroyed by two pyramid turtles and he has mirror force set. So he's just trying anything he can to get a plus one here. I, I don't get the uh, thought process. I'm not sure. Like Pyramid Turtle is one of those cards that you just torrential or you just mirror force, you just deprison. Like that's what you want to be hitting. Um, so luckily this uh, JG is really benefiting from the fact that the opponent is not playing the mirror force. So slamming Dark Arm here. So this is actually a really good play by JG because he realizes that he puts him on three darks. Searching the Mizuki is just far better because of the fact that you don't care if Dark Arm slams down and kills your whole board. So he summons and he targets the monster, which is appropriate, but we have Bottomless that's been sitting there for a while. Um, and we're just gonna take 1700 here. How many docks are in our graveyard? We have two. We have a Mizuki play with a Goblin Zombie to put the third dark with the Plague Spreader. So this situation here, this game is probably uh, setting up nicely for JG. Um, as long as this play goes off, there's no, no Royal Oppression, we're okay. Targets a back row. That puts one, two, three, four darks, but we can stack the Dust Tornado. As long as Plague, it doesn't even matter if Plague gets banished with a DD Crow, and that's going to be game. So um, our opponent, or his opponent this day here, could have probably avoided a lot of this if he just Mirror Forced. I'm not sure what the process was at the time. Again, during tournament play, I, I try not to fault for certain moves because it's a lot. You're thinking about a lot of different things that are going on and um, it can be difficult at times. Let's see the last replay here. This was against Luigi. I think he's top tournaments before as well. Um, 
This is JG again. So let's see how the match unfolds. Let's see our opening hand. Oh, so this is tough. So again, I don't know. I'm not going to look at their hand. I'm not sure if they know who, what each other are playing because it's tournament play and something, you know, you can watch games and all that. I'm probably just setting Pyramid Turtle here and saying go. Um, I don't think that you need to set anything. So you have two plays, maybe three. You can set Necro Gardener, but that doesn't really advance your game state. It doesn't really get you anywhere by just setting Necro Gardener. So I don't think that's optimal at all. Number two, Pyramid Turtle seems to be the best play for me because if you happen to play against an aggressive deck, Black Wings, Machine, or anything like that, they summon a gear frame and they attack. You can already kind of get your um, zombies into rotation and then you can decide what to search based on what they summon. And the last play would be just set Torrential. So Torrential is really good against just a Black Wing summon, you know, Whirlwind Shuro play. So I think that's probably, in my opinion, the best play is probably just set Pyramid Turtle here. So this I don't agree with. Uh, why? There's not a time where you want to torrential your own Pyramid Turtle. So this can't stop a Blackwing play now because now you're forced to minus one yourself if you torrential. So I just don't think setting the torrential here is necessary. And it also creates a situation where you have to play into Icarus Attack now where you didn't want to because you already have two cards on the field. So I think that I probably would have done that a little bit differently. We'll see how this turns out. Um, so this looks like a hybrid or Vayub deck. Um, so he searches the, um, zombie master, which is fine. Cause he's got the necro garden that he wants to discard and get back the pyramid turtle looks like. So we have two back row here. Um, and this situation here, there's a lot of different plays you can make. And that's, what's difficult with zombies. Number one. Um, and again, looking at somebody's hand and trying to figure out what is the proper play. It's not very clear all the time. There's many different plays you can make. So I think that you could attack. I think I would just attack or you could activate zombie master's effect and try to discard for pyramid turtle, probably the better play. Um, so we'll see what happens here. You could also foolish. You could put, um, plague spreader zombie in the graveyard. You could book of life. There's just so many different things you can do here. So he just attacks. Um, I think that's fine. I, I, I think that also I probably, since you already nailed and got the zombie master into play with in dodging bottomless, I think it's probably safe to try to pitch the Necrogana into Pyramid Turtle, putting it in defense. I think that's fair too. And then just trying to attack. So let's see what happens here. So he does take the damage. What are his back rows? So actually he would have had Royal Oppression. He would have Royal Oppressioned it, um, which is fine because you still have Torrential for a follow-up play. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, we're going to try to book a life. So book a life here is just to get rid of the value. Royal oppression comes down. And so work, this play worked out best just attacking because you didn't lose the zombie master to royal oppression. Going to make the armed wing, which is like the power play of the deck. And at this point, he doesn't even bottomless here. Interesting. Um, I think I probably bottomless just because zombie master it can just be used as a beater here. And another reason why I think I bottomless is because I have a Spirit Reaper follow-up. So if they don't do anything else here, I can summon um, Spirit Reaper and potentially just rip a card out of the hand. Oh, they do set another monster. So they trap Dust Shoot. He shows uh, the viewers, obviously. Uh, sends back the Spirit Reaper here. So at this point, I think you got to set Necrogon there. Yep. Again, he is not flipping Torrential here. So in my opinion, as I think at this point i probably would flip torrential because i don't think that this that luigi is going to summon a third monster here and you're just because he's too good of a player um if anything he's going to synchro and or he can't synchro because of royal pressure but i just don't think he's going to make a third summon because i i understand he's really trying to bait this torrential here um against somebody that you know maybe my last opponent that i have on on this uh video here you could potentially try to bait a third summon but some of these higher tier players they're not going to to fall for that um so this is fine he drew mirror force not setting it just sitting back um i probably would have taken the 2300 there because um i like to hold necrogana for a while and can also set up maybe uh tribute plays with it so at this point he's probably just going to set mirror force and he's going to be forced to have to play it Um, yeah, so I think Luigi could have just Icarus attacked in the end phase and hit the new set because you're just putting so much pressure on him. You have to assume that the new set's real. 
Um, so he just changed. So he actually gets a plus one by doing it his way. But um, so this is this is a prime example of why of why Icarus attack is just so devastating. You activate Mirror Force, they chain. He's going to hit both of these. You lose three cards, and all they lost was a free Vayu uh, Armed Wing and an Icarus. The card, it's so good. You have to really play around it early game. Um, this game does not look like it's going well. Oh, hold on a second. So um, he just tops a heavy and slams it for a plus two, <laughs> which gets him back in the game. I'm not sure if... I'm not sure why Luigi set a third spell or trap in that in that situation there. You have Royal Oppression on the board. I'm not sure what you're afraid of because you should still have Mirror Force in your hand. And he's going to heavy there anyway because he can't. He has to in order to play. Um, so that was a little sloppy, I think, in my opinion. But again, I don't want to nitpick every little maneuver or play. Um, so this seems right to me. You can summon the Zombie Master. You can ditch the Ill Blood, which is best place for it. It's in the graveyard or removed. And I would summon Pyramid Turtle. You can definitely crash here as well to search maybe a um, Plague Spreader and then Synchro Main Phase 2. Problem is, if they have Kalut in their hand, then you're going to lose Zombie Master. So you have to be very, uh, you have to watch what goes on here. Maybe the play is to probably just search Zombie Master and then try to run, I mean, sorry, Goblin Zombie here after you crash the Turtle. Let's see if he gets Turtle. Yes. So let's see what he does. I think I'd probably search Goblin. Oh, he's so he went all out. That's brave. Um, Because one collude here will stop this whole play. I, I guess you have bottomless, so you don't really care. I think this is actually a play that I probably wouldn't have done or thought of. Um, But it works out here because now he's going to get to discard as well. So that was pretty clean. Let's see here. So what got us back in this game was a top deck heavy. It happens. Okay. But our opponent played into it too. They, they set a card that they didn't need to set. Um, so some people would say, oh my goodness, you luck sacked, uh, you, you top deck a heavy. Sure. JG did top deck a heavy, but the problem is you played right into it. Like you made that heavy that much more devastating because you set a mirror force that didn't really need to be set in my opinion. So anyway, not that anyone's complaining here. Let's see. So, um, yeah. Um, I'm surprised that he... Okay, I think that's fine, the play that he made. That's fine. Um, so another to an another clean top deck. So Spirit Reaper obviously would have died to Gale targeting it next turn. So we top deck a Caius. Um, he didn't have Kalut last turn, or he would have played it. So I think this is fine to target that and try to run over the Blizzard for damage. Let's see here. Another Blizzard. This card's just so good. It's just so, so good. We have Bottomless, so we're okay. Um, they don't have a level four here, so that's the reason why they can't make a Brio or Goyo. Um, JG is playing. He summons the Goblin Zombie. I think that's fine. Trying to run over both of them. Mirror Force would hurt. Icarus attack hurts too. Mirror Force is already gone. Um, so he Icarus and hit the back row and the Caius. Goblin Zombie searches Goblin Zombie here. This game is crazy. It's back and forth. Um, Shura is going to search. JG is running out of zombies. Let's see here. And, um, yeah, this is not a good position right now. The black wing deck is just blowing up and, um, Android into black rose and okay. That was back and forth. I didn't see how it ended, but all right. Uh, Luigi ended up winning the game. I think he was just going to um, Black Rose, and then he was going to buy you from the graveyard. That's what he was going to do. He was going to make an arm bring a win. So here, you can do... You can in this instance. Let's see what he draws. Um, I'm not alluring here at all. I'm probably just setting Pyramid Turtle and Bottomless. I think that's appropriate. Oh, he was nervous for Nobleman. That's also fine, summoning that. I think that's actually heads up. Let's see here. So heavy one for one. That's fine because they obviously want the Sirocco to stick. Um, so I think the, I think that's a fine play. I think that's fine because you know that they have an Icarus, right? Yes, they do. Of course. Sack. So playing around Icarus attack here. Okay. So you could have searched plague spreader zombie and then tried on your turn to mind control. 
the second you try to do that, they're going to train Icarus and they're going to hit the plague spreader and the mind control. And that's not going to happen. So by just grabbing goblin zombie and tributing for Caius here, you're still playing around the, um, Icarus. Of course they had solemn, so that's no fun. We search ill blood here just to remove it with uh, allure hands looking pretty good here. You don't want to smash and ground or you could miss smash and ground. It's fine just to save 2000 life. All right, so at this point, you got some plays to make here. Um, I You could Foolish Mizuki to the graveyard. You can Foolish Plague. He does. He Foolishes Plague. He's a Book of Life here. And now we're going to try a Goblin Zombie play. Let's we'll see. Right into Brio. Um, so this is like a power play from the deck. Again, still Icarus Attack was there the whole time. Has not really had an option to use it yet. Uh, so JG's going all in right here because he has game. He's at 4,000 here. And um, the Solemn actually lost him the game by just Soloming that because now he didn't have any defense for the power play. And we're going to game three. Let's see here. Let's see how this game plays out. Um, side decks a lot similar than mine or in terms of how he side decks. I don't know if he takes out a lot of the zombie engine. I know I side deck up most of it, but he does put in the lightning vortex and smashing grounds and all that. So our opponent gets to go first, which is really a bonus, especially if you're playing Blackwing, if you can open up the um, Whirlwind. Illblood in your hand per usual, 50% of the time it's in your hand, so why we got to get rid of that card. Um, Goblin Zombie coming down, perfect, and I'm going to set Bottomless here to back it up. Perfect. So at this situation here, no, you shouldn't be tributing for Illblood, just not a good effect, not anything you need to do. You're going to save it for the Zombie Master to pitch it. Um, so in this situation right here, he sets a value and does not Icarus attack uh, because you have Goblin Zombie. So th this is one of the reasons. This is this is the reason why this this deck can actually hang with Blackwing is because of this card because they never and Mizuki they don't want to Icarus attack this card because it just doesn't get them anywhere because it just replaces itself. Um, I think that it would probably would have been made sense for, for him to just Icarus and hit two, but I'm not a Blackwing player. I'm not sure entirely. Um, because now the Shura gets eaten by the bottomless. Again, playing not playing another card, right? I, in this situation, I'm not setting anything. I'm passing. Just, let's see if he does. He doesn't. So he's kind of playing. Setting Lightning Vortex is playing into Icarus Attack here. My opinion, I'm just... Because not, this doesn't stop anything that they do, okay? I would keep this in my hand and say, okay, summon Shura. And now I have Lightning Vortex, Illblood next turn if I need to. I'm not going to play into the Icarus. And there's an Icarus set, so... But I think some of the reason why he does this is because of the fact that he does not Icarus attack when he attacks the Vayu. So I think that kind of make, gives you a read where maybe he doesn't have it. We're taking this here. Now, you don't want to have to... You're not going to Lightning Vortex the Mizuki, I don't think, here. I don't think it's really worth it. Um, you may Brain Control. That could be an option here. And then Sack for Caius, main phase two. Let's see what he does. It looks like he's... Okay, so now we change it. So that's an okay trade. You're okay. That's a two for two. Of course, he does have a follow-up value play, but this wouldn't have been able to happen if you had the Vortex in your hand. You would have had a free brain control there. Uh, so let's see. He's pitching. Um, good. I think that's fair. I would like I like Goblin Zombie on the board all the time against uh, Blackwing just because of the fact that he can play around Icarus with it. Of course, Shura eats him alive, but um, it's obviously, it's not the best, but Pyramid Turtle is better into Shura. Uh, but this helps insulate against this card here, which is already one in the graveyard, so less likely that he has another. Um, so let's see. Depending on how the next turn goes. So he sets return, which is good, because he can next turn banish the Mizuki and then set up for a Caius and try to win the game. Um, depending how things go, he could actually just have a big synchro play next turn. Let's see. So just high aggression here. You don't really care until you start seeing back rows. Is there going to be a back row? There's no back row. This card right here is poop. Not good. So JG summoning Pyramid Turtle that one game was right um, because these people are side decking Nolman and Cross out. Card is only good the first couple turns of the game, in my opinion. Um, and at this point, this looks like this is set up perfectly for a game this turn. They don't set any back row. Um, doesn't matter now. Anyway, we got the Mizuki play. Um, actually has a DD Crow, which we don't care. We have return flips it and this is why this card has to be played it's too good to not have in the main deck in my opinion 
it's it's better than burial if you want to cut one of them burial will probably be the one i'd cut um and now looks like we have game here because that deck does not play gores really can't afford to play gore gores with all the whirlwind so nobleman across out with side deck in not a very good card um so again, this video here is really talking about how to play or what you should be playing around with, with zombies. Not everything is perfect, of course. You know, you're playing a game, you're trying to make decisions. I think JG did an overall good job playing the, the zombie deck into Black Wings. These two players here, again, I think they both topped events. Um, my opponent in my video, uh, in my match, I think was newer. Obviously not playing the deck ideally, um, but a lot of people play like that. So Again, I, I think that there are some things I would have done differently. And really, my goal when I play Zombies into Blackwing is to really focus on playing around Icarus because that card is a plus one to two for that deck. So it's like playing around Heavy Storm. You have to play the same way. Uh, you cannot just give them free pluses. The deck is too explosive. The deck is too good. And the cards are too good to be doing that. So I think if you take the approach where you're, every card they set is a possible Icarus attack and you kind of play optimally around it and play the cards that you have in your hand the best way where you don't care if they get Icarus attacked I think that's probably the best way to do it and I know that's very like everyone knows that already but people don't do it so um I, if I can find better matches of myself I would do that but uh that's gonna be the video for today so I'll see you all in the next one